Y'all been keeping your nose clean up there. So. It wasn't. Oh, okay. It wasn't. Not this. Not this. <laughs> not this time. Not this time. Like this time, it, I'm free. Emily, how's your favorite? All right. Okay, you guys. So we are going to left off talking about the APL spine. And naturally, what's going to come next? The good old lateral L spine. Oh, okay. Well, we can hit that again. Just talking about evaluation criteria on the APL spine. Of course, we want to see a true AP. That means you're going to have your vertebrae have those nice, beautiful, straight, rectangular shapes, like you see in the picture right there. That's what we call symmetric vertebrae. We want the spinous process to be actually in the center. If we see a spinous process going to left or right, it tells us the patient is what? Okay. Which actually happens more often than you might think, because once again, imagine you're the patient, your lower back is killing you. What are you going to naturally do? Shift, Shift your weight. So you always got to make sure that you're very careful before you take that x ray. I'm sure some of y'all have experienced that by now with some L spine patients. You're just going to naturally shift that weight on the hip. So always do what I say to walk around. Make sure they're nice and straight. You're going to hold still. Don't move. Don't move. I know it hurts. But don't move. Don't move. Don't move. Make sure. Keep communicating to them. How else do you check that? You look at those SI joints to be what we say is equidistant. If you notice one is very open and one is very closed, it's a big indicator that they shifted their hips on you like we were just talking about. Of course, what else you want to see? Nice, beautiful, open intervertebral disc spaces like we see right here. And then your high detail, which what makes the biggest difference on your detail is not only the technique, but once again, the tight collimation. When you leave it wide open like some of these techs do, it's going to degrade that overall quality, kind of defeat the purpose of what we want to see on that L spine. So that's your evaluation criteria of the APL spine. This x-ray is so detailed, you can actually make out some of the spinal canal right there. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. That's where all those nerves go down. Because the you, spinal cord ends about right here. Can you also see the psoas muscles? Like just barely. Just barely. Yeah. Um, so, I'm not sure if you mentioned this, but um, for T lateral T spine, if the person has scoliosis, um, do you just have them just do the lateral just how you would do any other lateral, or do you want to kind of uh, angle the patient so the vertebrae can work stacked up? Delicious. So, like, I, I don't know. You know what I'm asking, right? Because like, of scoliosis, you're still just going to kind of shoot it as it was. And they want to go see the degree of scoliosis from that angle, so you're not going to make any adjustment because actually, if you were to like add an angle or a rotation on the patient and try to superimpose it there, it would make it look like a more straight spine. That doctor might actually be able to read and measure this degree of scoliosis. So really scoliosis is shoot it as it lies. You're not going to accommodate the curvature. Nor with kyphosis. Really a good question. You're not supposed to do that. Mm. Keep that in mind because they want to measure how bad the scoliosis is. They have to, they have to see how it's curving. That would be like... Um, I have a fracture that opened up the bone, so I'm going to angle it and close it back up. Mm -hmm. so you wouldn't want to do that because that's going to be the purpose of seeing the pathology, right? Makes sense. All right, so lateral L spine. So once again, you have that option of standing or lying down. In the nice bold red letters, you see that recumbent, of course, is going to be the preferred medium for this. Not only for comfort, but also for giving superior quality. Now, we're going to make sure the patient is in a true lateral. It actually can be more difficult to get that true lateral than I realize. All of you physicians this in lab this week. I'm sure your teachers showed you how important it is to make sure you check the top and the bottom. Did they? Make sure the shoulders are superimposed and also the hips are superimposed. Because very easily, once again, because of shifting weights, just because the shoulders look straight, I might walk down and their hips are shifted. Or I might have the hips just right, I walk right to the top and the shoulders are shifted. If we're not on the same plane, that spine going to end up curved. I can pick that true lateral. The spaces will start to close off, and the vertebrae aren't going to have that nice square shape that you want to see. So very, very important that we make sure they're in a true lateral. I always put my hand on their back. I'll stand at the head. I'll put my hand on the back, check the shoulders, check the waist, make sure we're all in the same plane. And I'll walk on the other side and look out from the feet side as well, just to double check and make sure I have them in that nice true lateral. So what you can do, of course, is make sure you have the knees flexed and superimposed on each other. It's going to help stabilize them, keep them from shifting that weight too much on you. 
You also want the elbows flexed. Make sure the arms are up all the way. If they have the arms relaxed, obviously they're going to superimpose the star of our show, that being the L spine. And also, if you have it available, very great way to optimize your lateral L spines. You probably don't see many people do this because naturally, if you look at the picture, if we're just lying on the table, the spine or the side of the body dips down. It's actually going to curve the spine. It's not going to put in that nice straight line that we want to see. So it'll be a little bit of curvature. Usually, it's still a pretty acceptable image, but if you want to once again optimize that image, place that sponge under their waist, right, right above the crest. That's going to put that spine in a nice straight line, like you see in this picture right here, giving you a really beautiful lateral L spine. What else do you notice in that picture has been used? Shield. Shield. Glad shield. Well, we're not shielding the table, right? Mm -hmm. We're not trying to protect the table. Why are we putting that shield there? Yeah. Or the purposes of the scatter radiation once again, because just like with the T spine, spinal the, the spine is a very thick bone, high penetration, high technique, high mass. And if I see we'll crank that mass up on some people on that L spine, mm -hmm. it's producing a lot of scatter, which is going to degrade the picture image quality. So when we add that shield right there, it's going to absorb that extra scatter, it's going to optimize that overall quality, that lateral image. And even though you don't see people doing this, guys, I'm telling you, if you start doing that on your L spines when you become a tech, it really takes it to the next level. It makes a big difference on the overall quality. So please do that. It really does help. All right, perpendicular central ray. We're going to enter right at the level of the iliac crest, or also known as L4. And then they give you a little, little kind of like cheat, cheat, cheat code there. If the spine is not horizontal, like they're laying like this, which most of us, let's be honest, are gonna do our L-spines just like this. That's how we do it in clinic most of the time. We don't want support. If you're noticing that the spine is just really wonky looking on the lateral, you can actually add a slight angle to your tube and it will kind of duplicate what you're doing up here. So you don't have to do this, but if you're looking for that really hot shot, optimal lateral spine, that can further optimize it if you don't build up their waist on the table. So that'd be a five to eight degree caudad angle, kind of similar to what you do with the spot film. Slightly more for females, because females naturally have wider waist than men, but that's going to help give you that nice, straight, beautiful, true lateral L spine. You're going to avoid some of that natural curvature of the spine. Like I said, guys, lead shield behind the back to help reduce that overall scatter, optimizing that image quality. Make sure your collimation is at minimum 85 <coughs> 17 collimation, just like with the AP, to make sure that we're, once again, boosting up that overall quality of the L spine. Yes. I don't know if you already said this, but you said um, if, if the spine is not horizontal, does that mean that there's no support underneath it? Correct. So naturally, because of gravity, mm -hmm. the body's just going to dip down. Mm -hmm. And you don't see a big difference on this guy here, but some people, their spine will actually curve downward a little bit. Just natural gravity in the position of the body. You'll be able to up get that nice straight line like we see right here. But if you can't do that, like you don't have a sponge available to do so, you can add this slight angle five to eight degrees call down, and it will basically do the same thing as this. Does it have to be a sponge or can we use sheets? I wouldn't use sheets because think about what you're doing. I Look how your ray is going through the body. Mm -hmm. Sheets are going to be picked up. It's going to be a big nasty artifact on your film. You, you would want it to be a radiolucent sponge, which let's be honest, most facilities do not have these. They mind it neither. So you don't have to do this, but it's just a way you can duplicate the same thing without having to actually build the body up. <laughs> All right, so for part position, oh, I'm sorry, we're jumping ahead to L5S1. I think the evaluation criteria is coming up here in a second. It's combined together. So as part of that series, of course, we also do what we call the L5S1 joint space or our spot, spot film. Spot film, which most types will call it a spot film. So the position for this one is actually exactly the same as a lateral L spine. We're just going to center it in a different area, and we're going to actually make sure we do have that. For, well, most of the time, we'll show you some variances. Most of the time, we're going to focus on that angulation, that call that angle of two, to open up that joint space further. There are some little variances there, and we'll show you in a second. So same thing, guys. Hips and knees flex on top of each other. We want to make sure it's a nice, true lateral. Hips are in the same plane. Shoulders are in the same plane. If there's any curvature at all of the body, it's going to actually close that joint space off. Elbows flexed, raised up, with the arms up out of the way. And like I said, you want to support that lower spine if you have it with a sponge to get that nice straight line. But also, that's what your little angulation is going to help mitigate when we add that angle. 
So I'm going to show you what I'm talking about here in a second. So according to Merrill's, if you have the sponge, you probably notice you don't have an angle. It's a perpendicular central ray. But because most of us do not use the sponge, we're going to go ahead and use that angle, which I think is probably how you learn in the lab, right? At the angle. Did you have an angle in lab? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes? Okay. Mr. Fong didn't tell us to always do caught it, though. Because he said, he, just like, he didn't say to always do it at a caught at angle, because, like, you sometimes should. patients, their spine will be like this, mm -hmm. and then sometimes, like, this instead. Right. So he said to right. angle it, like, whatever, like, would be better, I guess. I think I have what he's talking about. There's some slight variances depending on shape. Yeah. I'm just going to get up here. This one, yeah, actually said to do. 10 degrees like uh, cephalad for the coccyx and 15. And we're not on coccyx yet. No, I'm saying like 15 for the sacrum. So like mm -hmm. it flip flops. Right, we're not we're not on that yet. Okay. Yeah, we're not talking about sacrum coccyx yet. That's that's correct, but okay. we're jumping way ahead here. I wasn't sure if that's it's 15 But I will tell you guys, just based on my Personal experience, my personal two cents to you, despite any of these so-called variances, personally, I've always done a, this is my go-to number, I've always done a seven degree call at angle on every patient I've ever had. It always, almost always works out. You're gonna see these variances, but for me, I'm gonna use seven. Seven's a lucky number, it works for me every time. That's my, that's my go-to. There's also a little positioning trick, I think I have a picture of it here coming up, that will help you nail that centering every single time. But anyway, let's talk about the centering here real quick, guys. Now, when the spine's horizontal, it's only when the spine's built up, by the way. We're gonna use a perpendicular central ray. The centering point is gonna be two inches posterior to the anterior iliac spine, as is, and one and a half inches inferior to the iliac crest. Now, did we learn this in lab yes. the same way? That's kind of confusing, right? Yeah. I'm going to show you all in a second a way to nail that string every time. It's not this. Do not do this little thing right here. That's inaccurate. Who told you my trick? Yeah. Mr. Fox. Oh, he's still <laughs> stealing my material again. Oh. Man, I'm going to have to copyright this stuff. Okay, we'll, we'll get to that though, yes. Um, now, if not, in general, this is the general rule, you want to do about five degrees for males, call it ad, eight degrees for females, call it ad. Females, you always do a little bit more because of the wider hips. But for me, once again, my go to number of seven between the two works every time for me. It always has. It's been a perfect angulation for almost every patient, whether male or female. You can omit this Francis thing. I don't know what that's about. I've never heard of Francis. I should have probably deleted that bullet point. I apologize. Yeah, I don't know what that's all about. That's from 1992. That seems very irrelevant. Yeah. I, I was in second grade in 92. Good Lord. Um, radiation field collimation, six by eight at minimum, guys. Six by eight with that nice tight collimation. And this one, guys, once again, please do not leave that cassette or that field open on that 10 by 12 cassette. That's going to really degrade the overall quality. This is an even thicker area to penetrate than the regular L spine. It's one of the thickest points of the body, by the way. So typically, like you're gonna really crank up your technique. I always do like 90 and like 100 mass on some people. Like you really crank it up on this X-ray. So good tight collimation. Use that lens shield behind the patient. Make sure you're centering a spot on. It's gonna optimize that open joint space for you. Like their APA format though. Well, almost APA format. This should be right. This should be right here. The parentheses. That's all lowercase. That's correct. Yeah. And then we need a DOI right here. I'm sure glad you don't have research with me anymore. Mm -hmm. I miss that class. Mm -hmm. Well, you can bring it back to the other junior. You can bring it back to all the summer. Don't, don't wish, don't don't wish that on them. There it is. Yeah, so there's the magic technique, guys. Now, this is from when I was teaching lab, this picture right here. That's my hands, and that's Mr. Joel Biju. If y'all ever worked with Joel Biju? Oh, yeah. Uh, Joel, Joel. Oh, yeah. He works uh, even <coughs> at, 
bent on. That he was my demo patient for this right here. So, remember you said we saw the indie guy? Before the end of class, I will demonstrate this to you guys. Um, we'll get someone on the table so I can show you how this works. But essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut the crest with your hands. You're gonna put your pointer finger in between your thumb and middle finger. You're gonna lie it on the crest and then you're gonna put your steering on your DIP of your second finger, second digit. If you learn to master that, you'll get it dead on with the S, um, L5 S1 joint every single time. Much more superior to this because you're kind of guessing the center of that finger. I mean, there's so many variances there. You do this, my seniors of 2021 called that the drip dip. Can I talk about that, the drip <laughs> dip? Dr. Drip, D-I-P, um, you get it? Anyway, I'll demonstrate this a little bit later, but it works great, guys. Really, really great technique. You'll always nail that steering every single time. Does it matter, do you know how some people have like longer fingers or anything? It really doesn't, because I get that question every year, but it still <laughs> works for no matter how short or stubby or long your fingers are, it works. The curve is on the on the crest. I'm gonna show you in a second. Don't don't break your brain yet. I'm gonna demonstrate it. It's better if I demonstrate it. So at the end of class, we'll put some on the table and I'll show you what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right, there's some of those variances, guys. That's what Mr. Thong was talking about. How you can slightly change the angulation by the shape of the hips. I will tell you, this is not gonna make that much of a difference. This is extraordinarily um, subtle. Once again, what do I suggest you do personally? Lay them on the table, put a seven degree combat angle every single time. You're gonna nail it every single time. It's gonna look great. Especially if you do the little secret centering technique that I showed you, it's gonna work. But just keep in mind there are variances depending on the shape of the hips that you can slightly alternate that to the angulation if you so choose. Basically, this is the way you're gonna do it most of the time right here. This is what I suggest. All right, so structure shown. Of course, we're gonna see that lumbosacral junction. It's a fancy way of seeing the L5 S1 joint space. We also want to see the lower one or two lumbar vertebrae. In other words, it's not one and two, that's four and five. Be careful of that wording there. So on that joint space field, you wanna make sure you at least see all of L4. I'm sorry, all of L5 and as much of L4 as possible. You don't want to see if the L3 would be like leaving your collimation open. So lower one or two lumbar vertebrae is referring to four and five specifically. Keep that in mind. Then you also, of course, want to see the upper sacrum, not the entire sacrum, because we're not doing a sacrum x-ray yet. This is just the joint space. And then, of course, you want the star of your show to be centered. How do you do that? You do my little technique I showed you today, or I'm going to show you here in a little bit. If it's not centered, it's going to very quickly degrade the quality of that film. You've probably seen some pretty ugly films on this clinic. A lot of it has to do with the centering, lack of that shield absorbing scatter, and lack of proper KP mass settings. Very finicky x-ray if you don't execute it correctly. Now we want the open disc space. We achieve that by the positioning combined with the angulation. Crest of the ilia should be as close to superimposed as possible. That confirms to us that the hips are not rotated. We want to sure that they're on their side in a complete true lateral. By the way, not just the hips, you want to check the shoulders as well, because even if the top is rotated, it's going to rotate everything. Make sure you check the top to bottom. And then good tight collimation, get that nice detail around that body part. Oh, all the Harry Potter students are here again. Oh, they look like they're from Harry Potter. No, they work here? Yeah, they work there. Yeah, oh, they work here. It's weird. So, so, so for optimization, so for the text, you find this work, it's the most weirdest thing. But I'm just telling you, like, my personal experience. She's saying, well, Chuck's never here. Pretty much, man. They're super young. From what you told me, I mean, I thought they were high school or something. Book says, five for males. Maybe professionals. No, both call that. So actually, believe it or not, funny story. You remember that, was I telling you all that story about that tech I worked with with the really raspy voice because mm -hmm. she was a heavy smoker? Oh, she just heard like, oh, oh, Did I tell you all that? Yeah. yeah. She's the one that showed me how to do that technique. That's actually her, her method. 
That's the one thing I got from her. Was she didn't teach you how to pop it, the pubic center? No, she did. <laughs> she told me it's okay to, but I didn't do it. <laughs> You gotta quit being so shy. You just gotta get your hand in there. <laughs> She's like, oh, you go right ahead. <laughs> I don't think they're gonna appreciate that too much. Now we're gonna talk about two little specialized views here, guys. This is what we call the AP L spine right and left bending views. This is not flexion and extension. This is a very rare X-ray. We don't see this very often. Typically, they're gonna do this when they're kind of checking scoliosis a little bit further for degree of the curvature of the spine. So this is our AP left and right bending views. We're gonna bend the torso. So not flexion and extension, this is bending. Flexion and extension is coming up, it's a different one. We didn't do these. You didn't do these in the lab, this is a specialized view. This is very rare, we barely ever do these, which we do need to know it for testing purposes. So once again, supine is a superior way to do this. Now, there is an order that you go in. Why? I have no idea, but the book says you have to do this order, therefore we're gonna start with the right side. Because if they ask you on your exam, you wanna make sure you say you start with the right side. So per the curriculum at Merrill's, the first radiograph will be maximum right side bending. Second will be the maximum left side bending. Why are they prejudiced on the right versus the left? I don't know, but we're just gonna go with it. It's a right and left bias going on there, right? The like Twix. Like Twix. Yeah, you guys yeah, yeah. right twigs, left don't, don't, don't play. Come on. Just because you cut sugar, come on now. I haven't seen that commercial. I do love Twix bars. What? You haven't good. noticed on Twix? Yeah. For like the past 10 years, they've been doing right and left. Yeah. I guess that one says left. Yes. What? I guess that one says left. Oh, don't you go know back to Monty. Monty, let me find it. Now, you're <laughs> also going to cross the patient's leg on the opposite side as you bend the patient. Also move the pants heels toward the side that is flexed. And also move those shoulders directly lateral as far as possible without key work here, without rotating the pelvis. The hardest part about doing this is you gotta rotate the top of the body without actually moving the pelvis. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna bend as much as possible while keeping that pelvis as flat in the same spot as you can. Because naturally when you do this, <coughs> you're gonna move their hips. See, but you gotta do it without moving the hips. It's a very challenging x-ray. I've actually never done one of these. But I can imagine it'd be very challenging. <laughs> It looks weird. So it does look weird. <laughs> so in other words, this picture up here, he's bending his body to the right. He's crossing the left leg over his right leg. It's uh, I think it's to help keep the hips non-rotated, if I'm not mistaken. That's why they do that. Can you set up to do like scoliosis more? Yeah, we're gonna get to that. It's most it's, it's for double checking scoliosis now. I think it's like a spinal fusion, if I'm not mistaken. I might be thinking of flexion extension though. Question good? Yeah, I'm just thinking like, so you said this is probably gonna be on our test. Are we gonna ask more about the movement or like, is this contraindicated with like, suspension uh, of like a fracture or something? Is that? I'll get to that. I want you to focus on the position though. Like, just make sure you know you do the right side first. I've never seen them order these. Where, if I was to guess, they, they would order these probably in a special clinic where they specialize like in spinal mm -hmm. surgeries or scoliosis, things like that. That's the only instance where I can see them probably ordering something like this. All right, so the centering is slightly different. Please make note of this. Oh, by the way, um, before I forget, all the breathing techniques on these are just gonna be expiration, spin on expiration. You want to add that to your notes. Everything we're going over this this whole chapter slash section is spinal expiration. So perpendicular IR at the level of L3, that's approximately one to one and a half inches above the iliac crest, not two. One to one and a half inches above the iliac crest. And then technically they're suggesting that you can leave these open. So your text will be very happy about this. They can leave it open, either in a 10 by 12 or 14 by 17. Typically, you're probably gonna go with a 14 by 17 to cover that entire whole spine.
14, 17. It's about 12 to me that I've had it since close. All right, yeah, there we go. So I was right. Spinal fusion and scoliosis. Okay. So what are we going to look at? Maximum right and left bending, which we also call in bold there. Do you know that? Lateral flexion. Not to be confused with the flexion and extension x rays we're going to go with. So be careful there. This right and left bending is also called lateral flexion specifically, but that's different from a flexion L spine x ray. Is that confusing you? So, this is a right left bending view. This type of movement is what we call a lateral flexion, but it's not the actual flexion L spine x ray. That's a different one we're going to talk about when we bend the patient forward and back. Keep that in mind. We're going to be checking the integrity of a spinal fusion if that has occurred, if they've had a spinal fusion take place and scoliosis to see if there's any structural changes in those vertebrae. If they see something very odd with the degree of scoliosis, that's where you would see them ordering a view like this. Also, if there's a herniated disc, you can check for that as well. Not the prettiest x-ray, but you can see how it's showing that bending, or that lateral flexion. And they actually need to repeat this because they cut off L1. Bad barrels. <clears throat> Probably the only picture that we find though, it's such a rare x ray. <laughs> like, yeah, it's cutting it off, that's the only picture we got, so let's go with it. So, which side would we mark? Either? Either one. Not to the side that they're bending towards? I would have Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, th I'm thinking like an AP. Yeah, you'd mark the side you're bending towards. Um. So, this is going to the right, you use the right, it's going the other way, you mark with the left. So we're centering like an inch above the iliac crest? Yeah, slightly above the iliac crest. All right, so evaluation criteria. If there's a spinal fusion, you want that centered. You want to include the superior and inferior vertebrae when the fusion is in place. Of course, as with all our AP views, no rotation of the pelvis. This can be difficult to achieve because we're bending the top of the body. We're going to move those hips, so you got to be careful. Make sure you cross those legs to keep them stable. We want the bending directions correctly identified with the appropriate markers. To answer your question, Jay, there it is right there. You're going to mark the side you're bending towards. And of course, your detail as usual. Well. That person really needs to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Start to always notice that whenever you take x-rays. Like, hey, we really need to go to the bathroom. They got lots of gas and feces in there. Okay, let's talk about those good old obliques now. Now, once again, guys, I know I've harped on these obliques a lot, but these in particular, gold stars all over these next four slides. These are big ones. These are ones that the registry always asks about. You know, every single detail, even beyond what I haven't read for you. So once again, we're coming or upright. You have the choice of either. This is your superior view of laying down, incumbent. We're going to only do, by the way, LPOs and RPOs. That's what we're learning per the book. You know, there is an option to do posterior, I'm sorry, anterior obliques. We're only going to do posterior obliques because they're superior, they're more optimal. Please keep that in mind. We will always do a 45 degree mold word posterior oblique that includes our LPOs and RPOs. It must be 45 degrees. Now, if your facility has it, those triangular sponges, have any of y'all used the sponges? Mm -hmm. That is a big help to you for getting them in a nice true 45 degree oblique. If you don't have it, you have to kind of eyeball it a little bit. They're not using a sponge here, but if you have the wedge sponge, you literally put it behind them, they lay back on it, and they're at 45 degree probably for you. You can't miss it. So if you have those, I really suggest using them. On. I always need to learn how to iron them off a little bit. Hopefully they show you both ways in the lab. If not, I'm going to make sure they do. All right, we are still using a perpendicular central array. Now, the centering, 
Please make note of this centering. It tends to throw a lot of people off. We are going to be two inches medial to the elevated as is. Other, in other words, we are centering towards the elevated side or the upside. And we're going to be 1 to 1.5 inches above the iliac crest at the level L3. Slightly above the crest towards the elevated side. Now, one thing you can use, guys, on your patients, and this is where you kind of use that x-ray vision because you don't need to be exposing your patient's chest, but use the nipple line for that vertical line. That's where you center. The nipple line is the centering point. Does that make sense? So one and a half inches above the crest, along the nipple line, that will be towards the elevated side in the proper area. Or something else you can do, as appropriate as possible with your patient, of course, put one hand on the stomach, one hand on the side, bring your thumbs together. That's your centering point as well. Another little trick you can do. Make sense? Now your collimation should be at minimum a nine by 12 on 10 by 12. Why would you ever use a 10 by 12? I don't know, but it is an option. Me personally, stick with your 14 by 17. It's a lot area to cover. You wanna make sure you have the entirety of L1 through L5. 14 by 17 needs to be collimated down to a nine by 14 to only include that L spine, you know, all that extra tissue in there. So you want to be able to see those seals really clearly. But where people make the biggest mistake, and be careful guys, is people for some reason always want to center on the downside. Make sure you're centering on that elevated side. Use the nipple line, use the hand technique with your thumbs. Make sure you're slightly above the crest as well. You're going to nail it every time. Beautiful x-ray when you do it right. So we always center on the upside? Always on the upside. Because we're only ever going to do our LPOs and RPOs. Did your class of 21 and 22 not do oblique C spine? They did. Oh, somebody forgot. So? Mm. One of mine? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Portion. Favorites. One of your, yeah, one of your favorites. One of my 21s or one of my 22s? 21, I think. Where are you at, John? Do <laughs> <laughs> share, I'm curious. <laughs> How about Ben Top? He came so quick. I think I know who it is. Don't snitch. Yeah, I will. <laughs> you can tell me later. Snitches don't be snitches. Tell me. She's still good. What's sitting here stays in here. It's like Vegas. You sure? <laughs> Are you checking the camera back there? I look straight at the camera. I said <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not recording the class session. All right, guys. So he's like, just when y'all are alive. What are we looking at, guys? Of course, the big star of our show on the obliques are these two things right here: the zygapophyseals and the Scotty dogs. That's our two big stars of our show. But we're also going to include what we call the articular processes. And what we want to see the area from the lower thoracic all the way down to the sacrum, which is once again why, in my opinion, you would never use a ten by twelve. Even though you can typically get on there, you're going to be cutting it really close. Use your 14 by 17 to make sure you're including that entire area that you have to have. Now, keep in mind, once again, even though we're centering towards the upside, which ones are we actually looking at? Downside. The zygopopocyl is closest to the IR or the downside. That's the ones we want to be open. That's what we're visualizing on our radiograph. So if I do an LPO, which zygopopocyl am I visualizing? Right. The L. If I do an the LPO, LPO, which zygopopocyl am I visualizing? Right. right. I'm doing an LPO. Which type of puffacils am I? Oh, the LPO. The LPO. 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 The side closest is the left. RPO. Side closest is the. I said it like that on purpose because that's where people make a mistake. We center towards the elevated side, but we're visualizing the downside. So we can use the book. Huh? It's also in the book. I didn't hear so. Yeah, please remember that, guys. Very important. Yes. Guys, big star on this. You're going to see that again, not just from me, but very likely on your registry. I'm telling you this oblique stuff, they're going to put it on your registry exam. They love it. The spine is squirrely like that. Squirrely. Squirrely. <laughs>
big star here, guys. You need to know this exact evaluation criteria. Both of these statements have come up in multiple formats on the registry. <coughs> and I would be very surprised if it's not on yours as well. How can you tell if the patient is over or under rotated? Let's look at bullet point number one. When the joint is not well seen, which means it's closed off, and the pedicle, which is the what? Uh, the eye is anterior to the vertebral body. In other words, it's like too far over this way. That tells us that the patient's not rotated enough. In other words, they're like at like a, like a 20 degree or 35 degrees and 45. On the opposite side, if the joint looks closed off again, but we see the pedicle is posterior, like it's moving backwards, then that means they're rotated too much. Another way you can tell, it's not here, is you look at the nose. We want the nose to be barely protruding outside the vertebrae. If the nose looks really long, like it's coming out really far, they're over rotated. If it's very, very central, like it's all the way in the vertebral body, they're under rotated. Same concept. But this is what they'll ask you right here. I'm just telling you another little concept, but focus on the eye. This is what they're gonna ask you on your test right there. It's anterior, not rotated enough, posterior, we're over rotated. Huh? Yeah, we're gonna do some critiques and we'll show you what I'm talking about. So if the doggy is not all the way out where it's supposed to be, it's focus on the eye. Just focus on the eye. The circle, the pedicle. You want it to be pretty much central. Like this, this is pretty ideal right here, guys. If this eye has shifted over this way, then they're not rotated enough. If it's shifting back this way, they're rotated too much. So I'll show you some examples of what I'm talking about in a little bit. Not, probably not today, but when we get to the actual image critique part that I have for you guys, you'll see what I mean. I'll show you. So but please write that down, put a big star on those two statements. So basically you're saying if the eye is some actual demo images to show you what I'm talking about. But it'll make more sense. Trust in the madness. Trust in the madness. There's only the method to the madness. Even though you feel the madness, there's a method to it. Oh, this is so confusing. Why is it Well, we're in Rad Pro 3 now. We're taking it up a notch. <laughs> wait, till, wait till head work. I think your brain's going to melt. <laughs> That's why we do our review semesters too, so. What are we going to cover in Rad Pro 4? Rad Pro 4 is mostly philosophy. Oh, okay. Oh. I didn't like that resolution. Yeah. I haven't had to okay, and if you need a summary of your foramina and zygopopsils, again, aside from what I've already shared, guys, in your wonderful volume one of Merrill's, table 9 1 will help you out. Should be in there. Did I get that right? Oh, I don't know. the right number. Make like, sure I'm telling you the right, <laughs> the right um, table here. 9-1, 9-1, rather. Not dash. Is that not a dash? Okay, it's a hyphen. She <laughs> What's a dash? Did you take a picture of the previous one? Maybe it's called hyphen and dash. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's called forward slash, backward slash. I think, if I'm not mistaken, the the long one is the this hyphen, the short one is the dash. Because there's two different types. That one looks short. You're talking about this one? This yes. Is that 991? Nine, What's the page number? 429. 429, page 429. Those are the same stuff I've been showing you with my little tables that I shared with you. Ah, oh, I forgot about this. Okay, so I remember I had this last. So this is from last year. Okay, so because people don't believe I was in x-ray school, I found some old pictures of me in x-ray school to show you guys that I did suffer just like you did, but I had some pictures in my class. And All right, let's go back to obliques. I'm not going to share my images. But here we go. This is me in x-ray school. My class. Well, you haven't done half my class. Oh my god, you look the same. Yeah. I'm the same person. Well, I know, but you did eight. Yeah, you did eight. <laughs> Wait, were there only two guys in your class? 
There was four guys. This is not the full class. This is about oh. half, because there was 20 of us. This was one of the, my clinical instructors that tortured us and caused a lot of PTSD. Mm -hmm. but she was a good teacher. Uh, this was a, this, they had a mud volleyball tournament at the university oh. that we, that x-ray class competed in and lost after the first round. <laughs> but it was fun. It was fun. There's all this again. My hair was really short then. Oh! Yes. Why are you? Where are you? Look at those baggy jeans. Those baggy jeans are still in stock. Yeah. You look a little bit chubbier there. Yeah, I was a little bit chubbier. Yeah. There. I mean, not that chubby, but just. I actually lost quite a bit of weight back in the year. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was four guys in the class. It's not the whole class. Okay. Can y'all find me in this picture? Yeah. yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. I look so thrilled to be in class, don't I? How many? That's like an actual Students university, the way the seat oh. I don't remember what we were doing. This was is that a washer? Yeah, what is that? Is that a washer? What is that? It's yeah. a stove. It doesn't look like a washer. <laughs> <laughs> That's a computer. It's a lab. It was like, oh, wow. That was the, where they did the lecture. That's the overhead for me being bored. <laughs> That's what it means. For your information, we didn't use overhead projectors anymore. We had these kind, just like you see here. Really? Yes, we did. They were for the this girl right here was so, this girl was so funny. Her name was Jennifer Bruce, one of the goofiest people I've ever met in my life. Jennifer? Yeah. You said her name was Jennifer? She's cool. Jennifer. Oh, Jennifer. Oh. Jennifer Bruce. Do you talk to any of your old Nice. This guy, his name's Josh. I talk to him all the time. He actually, he um, he's a supervisor at an MRI clinic now, oh, okay. and like Charles and my parents go there for their MRIs. Oh. He always does their exams. He's always asking. Them, I bet he give him a discount doing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so is the president of the ARC? TSRT. Okay. Yeah. 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 So so no. So this was when I was in Louisiana. My friend, who's the president of ASRT, we went to Midwestern yeah. together. Oh. Under we did our master's degrees. Oh. oh. That's where I met him. Oh, so you went to a Midwestern. What are we doing? Like, no, I'm saying like, oh, what, oh. Now, locality. Oh. Like the Midwestern. Most of them. I think, I don't even think she's working anymore. Oh. I think she got married, had kids, and just like retired. Why are you laughing like that? But the, like, the rest of them, most of them are like in other modalities. A lot of them are like supervisors and managers now. And, so the majority of my class ended up being like in leadership, which is pretty cool. Uh, where did you go for your bachelor's? For this your is at McNeese State University in Lake Charles. Yeah. Oh, because you graduated with a bachelor's. Oh, you yes. went to McNeese? Okay. I, I went to McNeese, yes. They, so the x-ray program there is a four-year bachelor's program. Oh, so you do like two years of prereq. Then you do two years. So the way, they, the way they do it, you do, what, you do two years of what they call the prereq phase. Then you have two years of the professional phase, which is like what you guys are in now. Or do your clinicals, all your x-ray related tests. So, there's us, yeah. that was our last week in clinic right there, acting crazy. <laughs> so this was at St. Patrick's Hospital in Lake Charles. Look at that cube. Huh? Look at that cube. The what? The, the x-ray oh, tube. tube. That old tube. God, yeah. look at that. This guy is hilarious too. His name's Brian Arsenault. He was so funny. There's Josh again. There's Jennifer, that's the goofy girl I told you about. There's me pretending to be cool. <laughs> Rock and roll. This is Carly Bruyettes, Jennifer Bruce, Josh Warner. Oh, I don't know why I just forgot her name. She wasn't in Leslie. Leslie. And Brian Arson. What if he just made that up? There's a couple more there. Yes, for real. I don't know if I remembered all the names. Well, I've been moisturizing a lot. You don't remember our names? <laughs> 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 Alright, so this is Jennifer Bruce. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
so did y'all do it like when we do it you, you they partnered you with the tech and you had to, um, you had to be with them all day yes you did we had to do evening shifts sometimes. Um, we had all kinds of different shifts we'd go on. You could choose them? No, they made us do certain ones. Oh. And what was bad about where I, so this is where you guys are really blessed because you're in Houston. The population is so high, you just have a steady flow of people most of the time. You know, we have like slow days. You still have more than what we have. Lake Charles is not very, not a very big city. There's not a lot of people. So we'd be like, crunching for comps at the end of the semester. We'd we'll be looking at the display board where the schedule was. We'd like, just pray, please send something in. Please send something in. Please just a chest extra, anything. Because we have the same requirements you have with like a quarter of your population, probably even less than that. So when stuff came in, you had to do it. You didn't get, you didn't practice. You jumped in there and you did the competency. So that was your only chance to do it. Huh? We didn't, we didn't have time to practice. It was either do or die. And let me tell you, there were zero second chances. When you were when you were done, they're like, thank you for your money, bye. Go. You're just a number at the university. They don't care who you are. They don't have this close knit thing that we have here. So much different atmosphere. Anyway, enough of that. That's my extra days. Okay, I've got about 15 more minutes. We'll get to where I want to stop here. Okay, so here we have. Once again, don't be confused with the bending views. This is now the flexion and extension views. So these are also done, mostly to check spinal fusions. And make sure you know the difference per the picture. So first off, recumbent is superior, even though you see them standing on this one. We've done both ways. Flexion means the patient bends forward. Almost like you're flexing a muscle. Your body's an arm, you're flexing. <coughs> Patient bends forward for flexion, patient bends backwards for extension. And the IR, the centering varies depending on where the spinal fusion is. So that's where you have to look at your order and find out where the spinal fusion took place. So you might have to adjust that centering slightly. Mr. Fun said it's very risky to do it upright. For the That's why I would never stand up to somebody's knees because they're already having back issues. They have spinal fusion surgeries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, Most it's patients are really risky. Even to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. I have, I mean, yeah. Even people stand up for a chest x ray sometimes. It's like. Mm -hmm. and I, Typically, if you're going to do this standing, you want to have someone stand out there with them, holding their arms. Because as soon as Momo and Papa will be doing this, they're going to keep going back. <laughs> they're not going to stop. So. Or even when they're going forward, they're going to keep going forward. Right? You, know, you ever watch a toddler walking around and they put their head forward and their whole body goes like this? That's, that's yeah. what's going to happen. Yeah. You know, toddlers, they run with their head. <laughs> yeah. He did the Naruto run. <laughs> Actually, a little more common. Yeah, I've seen. I've done a few of these, even in Texas Children's we used to do these after spinal surgeries. Oh. What level of spinal fusion? That means so wherever the spinal fusion is taking place, where the spine is <laughs> fused, you're going to use that as your centering point. So you got to look to your orders. Like they might say, like they had an L1 and L2 spinal fusion. So you want to make sure you center up higher at the area of interest. The bending in this one is it not in the book? Is this not in your book? Is it not in the book? It should be in your book. Okay, it's travel three. 503. 503. Thank you, Shemaika. Uh, Correct. You find your centering first, then you move them forward or backwards. Alright, so once again. If there is a spinal fusion, you center at that point, but if there's no indication, you're going to use L3. So it's one to one, one to one and a half inches above the crest. So if there's a spinal fusion, that's your centering point. If that is not indicated, you center at L3, which is one to one and a half inches above the crest. And you're not required to collimate on this one. You do it over. <laughs> to accommodate for the bending, and the, I'm sorry, to accommodate for the flexion and extension. 
and this is how I would do it, guys, preferably. Don't be, don't be hurt for Mama and Papa. You know? Oh, good, uh, good choice. You like that? I dig that. Yeah. I choose the guess for a reason. You gotta flex the arrow. That's the, that's that's one of my favorite scenes right there. I don't remember know, saying in that one right there. Yeah, the hell. One of the best scene. battle scenes of all time. Yes, right there, yeah. I said, listen, I want the elves. I don't want nobody else. They was taking out everybody. Mm -hmm. They was taking out rows and rows. Like it was just that was when they would count. You know, they would count one, two, and. <laughs> All right, so what do we want to see, guys? If there's any motion in the area of spinal fusion, in other words, if we see the vertebrae shifting between the flexion and extension, that means that the fusion is not complete. There's been an error. So we're going to look for what we call motion, especially the vertebrae shifting. Or we're going to see if there's a herniated disc. Once again, if a spinal fusion is present, that's where we want it to be centered. The rotation as usual. And proper flexion and extension is what I like that. We need properly flexed, properly extended. So if they've had a spinal fusion, you want to center at that point because that's what they want you to visualize. They don't indicate it all there. So you got to read your orders, guys. Read the notes. It reveals quite a bit sometimes. You can also save you from x-raying the wrong parts. I don't know if you'll ever notice, but you get an order for a hand, and the notes say left hand pain when it's an order to the right. You guys seen that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, pay attention to little stuff like that. I usually ask them, like, you know, when we're x-raying, yeah, it's the whole like, that. I always ask them, like, where's the pain at? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. I have a hand and a point of foot, that was a big problem there. Because it happens. Oh, his back. Okay. It happens a lot. It, it, if, it, if it happens, like you say, you get in trouble. Like, yes, for example, the order takes left. Yes, you do. Because you went ahead and took it without being diligent and looking yourself. I mean, they can order stuff wrong all day, but if you perform it, you're in trouble. Now, if it says on the order, like it says right hand, and the patient still says right hand, but then they come back and say, oh, it's my left, I mean, obviously, that would be your fault. But if you see it sees on the order, so you're telling you, and you don't change it, you do it anyway, big no no, you don't want to do that. So it's like, I'm just going to do what the order says. That's what the order says. No, do your homework. You can actually get in big trouble for that. Oh. Yeah. 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. huh? Yeah, 10 minutes. Oh, thank you. So we get Nine in trouble now. does the person who forfeits it get If you report it, yeah. Like if we if you catch trouble, it, they get it. it wrong too. No. <laughs> you always, trust me, radiology is always the first to get the blame. Unfortunately. But if you report it properly, then they'll be in trouble. Yeah. I have so hands go up there. I'm Shaheen first, and Jay, go ahead. Mr. Don, you, you did the correct one according to the patient, and then put a note there. No. Or you, you speak need to, to call. your doctor. And your when that order is wrong, you do not do anything. You order. call the ordering physician, and you have them change it for you. Do not ever do anything without the proper order. Jay? Um, I was going to ask if... If we have a patient who's pregnant in the OR and we're still doing like x-rays and all that, um, the best option would be to like select low dose. Do we also do pulse or? You always do pulse, period. Always Unless do pulse, period? the doctor period. indicates otherwise. Okay. I don't care if they're pregnant, young, old, whatever. You always do pulse radiography. That's always a dose. That's a safety measure. Okay. Because I clicked it and... Um, I, I'm pretty sure his name is Nana. He like kept turning it off, like during my comp. Who was turning it off? It's Nana. Yeah. That's really. I mean, it, it, like he said, oh, why? Why are you touching? Like, and I was just like, oh well, I thought this is what we do. And just don't touch. Pulse, pulse means intermittent, intermittent floor. You never just hold it down. Oh. You need intermittent pulsing. Yeah. You do that with all fluoros, or you should. Doctors should be doing that too. Oh no. <laughs> the residents are. Why well, don't they fry people? Yeah, I know. They, have they don't care. Life. They should not they be. Though. You should always be with the floor. You should always be with the little children going, deep, release, deep, release, move, deep, release. You always want to do it like that. No, they have their foot on and they're moving. Mm -hmm. They're swallowing. That's, that's swallowing. 
All right, I think this is the last one we're going to talk about today before we end, guys. It's going to be the AP Axial Ferguson Lumbo Central Junction. This is an AP view that allows us to see that L5-S1 joint space by applying an angulation to the This, by the way, can only be done supine. You don't have a standing option on this one. You lay them in a true AP, extend the limbs, abduct the thighs, ensure the pelvis is, oh, excuse me, ensure the pelvis is not rotated because it's easier to close that joint space off. And as you can see, of course, we're gonna add a pretty sharp little angle on there. 30 to 35 cephalic angle, specific. Kind of looks like a sacrum X-ray, right? Mm -hmm. Very similar. So there are slight variances. You see there's a range. There's a reason for that. It's because between male and female, we have to make slight, uh, slight adjustments. So no matter what, oh, yeah. no matter what, it is a cephalic angle. But for males, we're going to use 30. For females, we're going to use 35. That's because of those different pelvis shapes that we learned back in Red Pro 2. As far as the entrance point in central ray, it's going to be one and a half inches above the pubic symphysis. We find that by palpating the what? Their trochanters. trochanters have a wiggle their feet. Find that their trochanter go one and a half inches above that point. Don't palpate the pubic synthesis, please. Now, another way you can do it is you can go two to two and a half inches below the as is. That's another way you can find it centering. I don't recommend that though. For me, it's easier to palpate the trochanter and go above personally. But you have two options, how you want to do it. Since so many people screw up doing as is, I recommend doing the trochanters. Oh, man. But that's the two options to center. Both should get you in the same spot. It feels so weird touching something like that's definitely weird about it. Like, you have to touch me out. Like, I don't know if it does, but I can't eyeball anything. Like, like, even when they have like, a shootout, I don't touch it. You'll learn to. Like, I don't like touching it. Your, your x ray vision will start developing in your senior year. You'll see what I mean. And you just won't care about how they can do trust me. It comes so naturally, you don't even think about it anymore. I tried to myself by the light and stuff. I don't know. Like, I don't know. 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 I don't know.